With the many events ahead of us as part of the Literature Festival in Wolverhampton, there are many people who are involved in one or two events. These guys are involved in several. We have Billy Spakeman. Hello. Hello there, how are you? I'm good, you alright? Yeah, fine. And I'll, I'll let you introduce the rest because they're okay, your, your, your trouble and, and, and cohorts. On your right is Brendan Hawthorne, mm-hmm. poet laureate of Wensbury, and the fellow Booniehead, um, which right. has something to do with one of the events yeah. that we'll be doing. And this is John Langford, who is a part of the uh, Charlie Grigg event that's on at the gallery. The Booniheads are on at Bantock Park on Friday evening, 7.30. And the Charlie Griggs story is at the gallery on Saturday at seven thirty. Well, let's start in a sense of place then. Friday night, and okay. uh, and, and uh, so Booneheads, is that I'm pronouncing that correctly? Yeah, Booneheads. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. my accent's reasonably strong, but not as strong uh, as, as either of you two guys. Yeah. No, we 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 representing the Black Country philosophers, are we? We are, <laughs> we are the Black Country sort of humorous philosophy society, I suppose, in a way. Yeah. And I, I know that uh, you've got in. One of your guys is a many a qualification which will allow you to philosophise as much as you need. Well, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it gets us in the back door, yeah. I suppose, yeah. But we tend to meander around, um, I don't know, trivial things and make them worldly um, in our own black country way. Absolutely. And, and the black country has got a lot of good understanding on life, hasn't it? it and, and particularly when you add some of that to, to poetry too, and that's yeah. where you come in. Absolutely. And, and the, the beauty, I suppose, really, for us to do this is one of the black country traits is to start off with what is relatively a simple story to tell mm-hmm. and could be told in a couple of lines. But it's that circuitous route that we tend to go around to come back to the point, And really, that's what our show is based on. It's probably has that punchline but it is actually the journey of getting to that punchline that we sort of work on and it's, it's always a, a good trip out around the midlands yeah. it's very enjoyable isn't yeah. it yeah absolutely. and I, so, I suppose between the two of you in particular when it comes to the words and this man here with a bit of music thrown in for good measure john I mean, it's going to be quite a treat on the ears yeah i mean friday night is basically us meandering about and if we get to the end, we get to the end. If we don't, well, that's just tough. But is, is, it, <laughs> is, is there a plan, though? Is, is, is it worked out to that point? We, um, we, have, some, <laughs> we, we have some cri- uh, scripted yeah. material, um, which we do. Um, a lot of our stuff is based on, on audience participation as well. So we will draw the audience in. So it actually becomes really a discussion evening, doesn't it? And we, we add our take on... Um, where we think it should be and so the audience can be as much or as little part of it and, and we tend to work with the rest don't we yeah, but the audience get to choose whether they want to be involved though because oh, these, yeah, these yeah. guys no, out there no. may not necessarily want no. to be part of the show no. well they will once we've started yeah. <laughs> you'll win the them ladies, over particularly if the ladies come in frocks because that's a big thing it is yeah it is yeah. because will he have his own frock on do you think is he, is well <laughs> he's not he's not, <laughs> not, I'm not asking you. he's not ventured out in it just yet <laughs> um, this isn't the Rocky Horror show but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it, it's going to be a night where you never know quite what's going to happen next, but it exactly. will be a, a longer theme, and it's going to be the home that it, we call the Black Country yeah. that it's going to yeah. be at the, it's, the heart of it. It's also Bill and Bren's sitting room. Mm-hmm. You, everybody's yeah. just welcome to come to our, sit, our venue sitting room. Otherwise, our own sitting rooms are a bit small, but um, <laughs> our venue sitting room, uh, and just to come and listen to us and, and to join in a mm-hmm. bit. So yeah. on, on the virtual Chesterfield that is the stage, That's right. they can sit back, enjoy yeah. it and listen to the show. Yeah. Yeah. And then, John, you're going to throw some music in for good measure too. John, uh, John was involved in the Saturday night one. That's um, the Saturday one. Ah, uh, so you, the, are you going to go and watch? Because yes. if you're in the audience, you could technically join in. No, you, if, if they, John's they, in the they, audience... They're then, the hecklers. Yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. heckle them because yeah. they, they're the professional hecklers. To <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> providing the music on the Friday night. Aha, so what are you so, doing musically then? Um, I'm doing a couple of Black Country songs I've written. Yeah. and um, anything else that we really want to go along with. It is yeah. really loose. It's quite a um, an organic um, point, process. If, if one of us wants to take the floor and us the other one off, uh, for want of a better word, <laughs> then that's just what happens, isn't it? <laughs> it, it just moves on and the, so yeah. the show changes direction changes, slightly, yeah, whatever, yeah. but it's yeah. still going to end up probably in more or less the same place at the end of the night. Yeah, always. We hope so. Yeah, yeah. always. There could Unless be there could be an interesting discussion at this point. <laughs> Who knows which of these two is going to win? I, I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to happen here. This could be quite good. So, 
you're going to do a bit of a poem for us now, I think. Okay, yes. We can talk you into that. Yeah, so uh, yeah. where where are you going with this poem? Is, um, is it something that may feature in the show itself or, or may is, not, depending on what mood Brian or uh, Billy happens to well, be in? This this poem is actually for the Charlie Grieg on the Saturday. Right. Um, and um, I won't take too much away from these guys for, for talking about the Charlie Grieg show. But we um, several artists were asked to provide um, songs or poems for the show uh, to tell a story of Charlie Grigg, and I'll leave that to these guys. Um, this particular thing is about Charlie Grigg, who um, illustrated the Beano and the Dandy and many others, and it's about my take on um, Charlie Grigg's influence on my life, mm -hmm. uh, obviously as a child. And it's called Summer Specials and Christmas Annuals, which will feature in, in John's song as well. A magical world of characters unfolded, unleashed with pocket money intent. The smell of print and artistry, only we knew how much it meant. He was November born on a war-torn dawn, his world flowed from his pen. He lit up our lives with his characterful smiles, he made our summers special then. Cos he drew five o'clock stubble on a desperate man who'd sit down with a heavy sigh. The direction to steer was made quite clear through a cow short shortcrust pie. And he was November born on a war-torn drawn. And he drew Corky the cat, who was now a diplomat, did things just as he pleased. A real colourful character in black and white before our child had ceased. And Charlie's world flowed from his pen. Cos he drew the bullseye target of playful pranks and the grumpy old parkeeper foe. Even the earnest burly policeman found that fun was the only way to go. And he lit up our lives with his characterful smiles, cos he drew worlds within worlds in realms of fantasy from the lands of Beano to Topper. Dandy mice chortling in the skirting boards bought tea hees to this comic book shopper. He made our day so special then, cos he drew the turning of the year to Christmas, an annual loaded with seasonal fare, where old enemies sat round tables just to show how much they cared. And he was November born on a war-torn dawn. His calling came through his pen. He lit up our lives with his character smiles. He made our holidays special then. He did. He made our weekends special then. He did. He made our days so special. So special then. Right, you two guys have got to applaud because I'm holding the microphone to my card. But that was very, yes. very good. I enjoyed yes. that. And, and that's, that's, that's the sort of poetry that does move you and stir you as well, because you can tell the passion behind it and the fact you probably had a lot of ink on your fingers as a kid. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, and obviously many dog-eared comics under yeah. the bed. And yeah. those are one of the things that lasted and you wouldn't let them go, would you? No, they, 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 no. you, you could go back to them. Um, it was a safe haven for me. Um, I actually think the comics bought, yes, they bought this alternative reality into your life, but it was always a safe place to go. You know, because nobody got hurt in the end. Everybody was friends at the end of the story. And that brings us nicely on to the Saturday night. And first of all, then, then Billy, what, what, how do you see the rest of this with your involvement go on, on the Saturday night do, Banto? Um, well, it, it all started with Steve Grigg, um, Charlie's son, who came on the, the radio programme and do for Black Country Radio. And um, he talked about his dad's life. And the last thing I asked him was, what's the biggest regret about your dad? And he says, nobody knows who he is. So, as I normally act like a bull at a gate, I said, well, we'll change that, Steve, no problem, we'll get a blue plaque. At the time, I think the Jack Judge plaque had just been um, put up in Albury. So, uh, I thought, well, how are we going to raise the money for the plaque? How are we going to do this? And I thought, oh, no, we'll put on a show. And Steve's just got an absolute ocean of stuff, original work by his dad. So, I went and discussed with him, and I said, look, um, what I'd like to do is just feed this out to various people who, who, you know, do some work and let them have their take on it. You produce the backdrop and we'll do this show and I'll loosely narrate your dad's story. And it's just sort of um, blossomed, I suppose, from that. And we did the show at the Pump House in Langley last October. We did another one that, that platformed some of John's young starlets from the Maverick and the money came in and donations came in. So the blue plaque is on order. Um, it'll be um, unveiled at Rudin School, where Charlie went on uh, May the 20th. And um, very kindly they asked us to do it at the Lit, Lit Festival. Well, you know. see, I mean, it certainly still needs to be heard. You may, yes. the, the, the intention was to make the money, but now everybody knows this tale starting to come out of there. And you've got a job to do. You've got a yes. blue plaque, but you've still got to tell the yes, story and get it definitely. out there. And it's such, 
two things happened. It was such a joy to work with the family, and a lot of family came to the pump house too, and they found out things about Charlie that they didn't know, and they also thought, well, actually, he was important. You know, we all his years. Oh, our uncle used to draw this, and it was just um, left as that was. Mm -hmm. But now they realise that he's as important as Jack George. He's as important as the Tip and Slasher. He's as important, you know, as Jumping Joe Darby. And the beautiful thing about Charlie Grigg was, he did everything from a room at Barnford Crescent in Langley. He had the opportunity to move to DC Thompson's up in Scotland, but he chose to stay here because this was his home, and he would never leave. And you know, the story is that they sent him the scripts, he transferred them into images, he bunged them into a tube and he sent them back up to Scotland. And the days before away. email. Exactly, <laughs> you know, and he, and he was such a humble bloke. And Steve, I very often say to Steve now, um, you know, what, what would your dad think? And he'd say, well, he'd be really annoyed because he was so humble and he ne never wanted any fuss. Yeah. But, you know, we've created the fuss and it's just lovely that people, these, these blokes have been, and Emma Persehouse who does some stuff, have embraced it and that's a wonderful thing I think and, mm -hmm. and you know it's there to be seen um, and, and the show is great you know it's uh, it's full of quality by these blokes and just me what bantering on I suppose and your quality when you do that come on we, 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 on about. well what I want you to do is I want you to say to Steve Steve I don't have to formally give everybody your dad's life mm -hmm. we'll pick out bits that maybe they don't know about even your family and we'll just talk about it and the relationship that these blokes have got with it and what I wanted them to do was tell the audience why they wrote that song mm -hmm. and they're all very different you know John touches on uh, the late part of Charlie's life when uh, he had dementia unfortunately but one thing he could do Steve would sit him at the desk and he would draw Corky the cat mm -hmm. he wouldn't know what he had for his breakfast but he could draw Corky the cat <laughs> yeah. and he could draw this other stuff and it's great those things that stay that leave you with at least stay, part of yeah. the person you know, Bren touched on some things. Alex Van, who um, who did the artwork for the DVD, does an absolutely amazing number called "Draw the Line." Mm -hmm. And while he while he sings the song, his portrait of Charlie Grigg comes up on the backdrop, uh -huh. and it's just incredible. And he just and he just was so privileged to be part of it, you know, and that's mm -hmm. the nice thing about it. And it shows what immense talent we've got here in the Black Country. Yeah, well, I, I know Alex Van's work's particularly good. Yeah. I've seen him do some great artwork, and he uh, he can be found online as well, as can you guys. But give us the full details of the shows, and then we'll get John to sing yeah, us a the, number. The two shows were at Bantock Park on Friday the 27th at 7.30. That's, 7 that's the Booniet show. Yeah. We'll be, I'm not sure which gallery in, but we're at the art gallery on the Saturday evening, 7.30, to do the Charlie Griggs show. Um, both of them are free in, and all we're going to do is leave a hat, and if people want to, you know, bung a fiver or 50 quid or something, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Um, as long as it's not that hat, because I know yeah, it's, it's not going to be big <laughs> enough. We'll find, find a decent hat to, we'll to get put a good in. hat. Um, and then that will, you know, that will go to help these lads' expenses, but also... We're just talking to Mick Pearson from the Black Country Society at the moment to now produce a book of Charlie's work and that, and so hopefully that will progress yeah. from you know from there. All the unseen stuff so far will bring some fantastic memories back, oh, but again, give something new that they won't have seen out of the heart of the Black yeah. Country. I mean, I've seen, I've been to Steve's house and I've seen some of the original stuff and it's Christmas card, personal Christmas cards is drawn for people. Um, used to get these old things at the social clubs where they'd do cartoons of all the, the board of the so all these things that he did just for you yeah, know. of course there's the postcards weren't there? yeah the postcards you know, the, the, the postcards the, yeah. the saucy postcards. postcards that he did so it's so, phenomenal yeah. loads of stuff to see if yeah. you want to find out about anything to do with the festival www.wolveslitteraturefestival.co.uk you can find out about these guys on there but do get along to the event it's going to be well worth doing and to prove that John over to you I'm not going to, what, what, what is the instrument? I'm not going to try and name it myself. What are we looking it's, at there? It is actually a, a traveller guitar. It's, um, it's a Martin traveller guitar, and it is very light. Cause it I'm was just, Martin's uh, when it, it belonged to Martin. Yeah. Now it's travelled. I stole it off him. <laughs> I actually stole it off him. But, but no, it's, I can't lift a proper guitar up at the moment. I'm recovering from some surgery. So I've just bought this, which gives us an okay sound. Well, take it away. But, but we, the, the song is called Half Moon Shining. And uh, I have to tell you the little bit about it because you think, what's the old fool going on about <laughs> it if I don't? Um, like Billy said, Chaz, in his later years, developed uh, Alzheimer's. And like he said, that I thought that was amazing that he couldn't remember what he had for his breakfast, but Steve told us that he drew a perfect picture of Corky the Cat mm -hmm. and things like that. And I was struggling because Billy asked me to get involved in the project and I hadn't wrote a song. 
and I cannibalise this version of Half Moon Shining because the Half Moon Shining represents the Alzheimer's or or the state of your mind because you're not there, are you? You know, mm -hmm. in different places. And Billy said to me, he said, "Well, what what did the dandy mean to you as a kid?" Well, it, it meant Christmas annuals. <laughs> I loved it. Couldn't wait to get Christmas annuals. Couldn't wait to get the summer specials with the little free gift on it. And I used to laugh out loud when I read the comment, the comic. I could remember that. And Billy said to me, well, you've got to incorporate that into the, 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 the song. So I, that's what I've tried to do, is to tell the story about his Alzheimer's with the half moon shining. And then to say, I laughed out loud. I love the Beano and the dandy Christmas specials and things like that. And also what Brent said, I was amazed to find out all these saucy seaside cards as a kid you couldn't wait to have a look at. Yeah. Most of those <laughs> were drawn by Chaz. Mm. Yeah. And and the, if you're lucky, you can actually get some that have actually got his signature on. He used to sign so the Bamford cards, but he couldn't do, um, he couldn't do, do anything. Dan, he mm. couldn't sign anything for DC Thompson's. Yeah. But Steve knows which ones are his dad's drawings and which aren't because of the way that he shaped the hands. And Stella McCartney has just released a new spring collection with Desperate Dan and Corky the Cat. And they, Steve is 100% certain that are his dad's version of Corky the Cat and Desperate Dan. Absolutely wow. brilliant. You know, so so, so, that's so that's Stella, if you're out the there, come to the launch. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure she'll be uh, looking to pop <laughs> in. Please. Bring your frock. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and uh, Billy may try it on for yeah. you, but there we go. Oh, yes. Definitely. He'll certainly run a critique on this. <laughs> yeah. So this is called Half Moon Shining, and these guys are going to sing a little bit with me. I think we are, yeah. So.
Yeah. Yeah. So you've got to applaud again. Absolutely fantastic. Loved every minute of that. Brilliant. And so nice to be sat in the middle of it as well. It's quite a surreal experience. We can join in the chorus. I, I was tempted to, but my singing you wouldn't have enjoyed. However, do get along, see these guys. There's some great stuff taking place as part of the Wolverhampton Literature Festival. That's just one example of it. It's true class. Sit back, enjoy, and listen to all these shows. And take on the stories. It's about the stories, isn't it? It's all about the stories. Yeah. Thank you. Fantastic. Thanks for joining us. Pleasure. Absolute yeah. pleasure. Cheers.